Let's do one more example and then we're going to move on. Let's say Cisco for All Technologies, review now. Let's say next. It says which three statements are true about firewalls. It doesn't state which type of firewall, just about firewalls in general, and says choose three. Let's start with the first one. If a system in a security zone is compromised, a firewall can help to contain the attack within that zone. That is a correct answer because that's the scope of zoning. You put the fire, you put your resources into different firewall zones because each zone has a certain level of security and you can contain an infected endpoint within its zone, with it, which is what the answer is saying. This is correct. I gotta choose three. Let's say this, let's look at the second one. A file can prevent undesired access to a network security zone. This is also correct because a file can actually prevent any kind of network access to a specific security zone. The third one. Modern firewalls provide a complete network solution. Now, this is debatable, right? Now, probably you'll know about UTMs or next generation firewalls, which do a lot more than regular, you know, IP address filtering. They do application filtering, they do IPS, fil IPS filtering, they do advanced malware protection, they do HTTPS inspections, they do a lot of other things. So you may state, I mean, from my point of view, this could this could be a, a, a correct answer, but actually I would I would not consider this to be correct for a specific reason, because it states provides a complete network security solution, not a complete file solution, and there's no such thing in network security that you have one product which covers all of your needs end to end from the networking point of view. So from my point of view, this is this should not be a technically correct solution, uh, technically correct answer. Let's move on. Firewalls typically provide protection between and within network security zones. This is also correct, although I think at a CCNA level they only teach you about inter security zones, not intra. But it is correct. Last option. A file can introduce a performance bottleneck. This is likewise correct. So why does a file induce a performance bottleneck? Uh, could possibly do that? Because if the file does a lot of uh, inspections, so the file does application inspections, does HTTPS decryption, does uh, so layer seven, layer six, layer five, layer four, layer four inspections, for those cannot be done in hardware. I mean, up to this point, some of them can be off offloaded in hardware, but most of them, like application inspections, and for example, uh, you know, actually deep packet inspection has not yet been done in hardware. And because of that, if you have a one gig link between two routers, for example, which was functioning at one gig full speed, and you put a firewall in between, if the performance of the firewall where all inspections enabled is 100 megs, then that's a bottleneck. Because both routers are sending back and forth 1 gig a second, but the firewall in between can only process 100 megs a second. So now we ended up with four possible correct answers. We got to choose which one, which three ones are the most, are, are basically uh, which one is less correct than the other three ones, basically? So I would state I'm going to read again all the answers. I'm going to state that this one, the product can introduce the performance bottleneck. This is a very a correct statement, 100%. Files typically provide protection between and within network security zones. Now, this could be a... Uh, let's say a not a correct answer because the answer states files typically provide protection both between zones and within one zone and typically what files do they provide security between zones not within one zone 
So it is a wording issue, but that's why you have to read the question properly and read the answers properly. So which means also that you not only have to be knowledgeable, but you have to have a good, good uh, English skills and you have to be able to read the question without rushing it. So at this point, without reading the other two options, I would claim to say that this is actually the answer which is not correct because typically files provide interzone between zone security, not intrazone or within zone security. Let's read the other two, two answers. And yeah, the second option was a file can prevent undesired access to an internet security zone. That is correct as well, because that's one of the reasons that why the firewalls to be able that why give only restricted access to certain regions of the network. And A, if a system in a security zone is compromised, a firewall can help to contain the attack within that zone. That is correct. So I'm going to stay now at this point that although also option number D it is correct. In my case, it's not because typically firewalls provide only interzone. So there you go. I would say that this is not correct as well. So let's go ahead and pick up option A, option B, and option E. Say next. Then which three options describe stateful firewalls? So first of all, you gotta know what is the definition of a stateful firewall? What are the characteristics of the stateful firewall? And there's gonna be your answer. So let's read the, the options. They provide stateful inspection of applications that utilize a control channel and dynamically negotiated connection. So stateful inspection, it is correct because it's a stateful file of applications that utilize a control channel and dynamically negotiated connections. This is correct. Let's move on. So let's put a correct in there. Option number B, they recognize TCP protocol violations and drop offending packets. That's correct as well, because they keep t track of the TCP state of the session. They are the simplest types of files. Now, this is wrong. Let me actually put green for correct and red for wrong. So first one looks correct. Second one looks correct. Third one looks wrong because the simplest types of files are not the stateful ones. We're gonna speak about those in the technology section. Option number D, like packet filters, they use ACLs and increment hit counters on ACL entries packet by packet. That depends, but it is also correct. Let's see if we end up with multiple, pass, multiple correct options. Next option, they require special coding on a per application basis. Not sure what they mean, because indeed, if they if you want them to recognize application, they have to implement application recognition somehow. I would tend to say that for the moment this is not correct, because the application recognition is not the definition of a stateful file necessarily. A stateful file may or may, may not be able to identify the applications. The next one, they store data about sessions in a state table and use that data to make access control decisions. That is likewise correct. Because that's how they keep track of the sessions, of the packets flowing back and forth by keeping a state of the packet in what is called a state table. So I gotta choose three out of those four. So let's see which one seems to be less correct than the other ones. Let's look at the, again the options. So I would state that clearly the last one is 100% correct because that is the one of the main definitions of a stateful file. They keep track of the sessions in the state table. They store data about sessions in a state table and use that to make access control decisions further. 
The first one, they provide state-owned inspection of applications that utilize the control channel and dynamic negotiated connections. This is correct, the first one. But the one of the three, basically, if, if the question is describe three options, which three options des describe stateful firewalls, I should pick up the three which best describes what a stateful firewall is which the first one is not exactly a description of a stateful firewall, is more of a uh, one of the possible features that a stateful firewall can have. Because it doesn't mean that a stateful firewall has to be able to identify protocols, applications that have multiple channels, a control plane session and a data plane session. Let's see the second option. They recognize TCP protocol violations and drop offending packets. That is, that this should be okay. And let's see between A and D, which one I'm gonna choose as being correct. Like packet filters, they use ACLs and increment hit counters on ACLs entries packet by packet. This is wrong because it's not necessarily that they increment hit counters on ACL packet by packet, especially to enhance performance. So I'm gonna state in this case that basically, um, I'm gonna choose option B, option E, and option A or this one where they require special coding on a per application basis. So let's think which one is better is a better answer. I'm gonna choose option A. So let's choose option A. Option B and option E. Which of the following statements is true about zone-based policy file? So of course you gotta know what zone-based policy file is and minimum details about how it works to be able to answer the question. So first answer is applies for all policies to traffic that traverses zones. That is correct. Although it also does that for, uh, actually it is actually a, a correct answer because it doesn't state which type, of, which type of zone. So it is a correct answer. B says interzone policies enable you to apply different inspection policies to multiple host groups that are connected to the same router interface. So interzone to apply different inspection policies to groups, to multiple host groups that are connected to the same router interface. This is wrong because if those hosts are connected to the same router interface, that's intrazone, not interzone. So that you should be able to know that this is a wrong is a wrong option just by reading what it states because the basically the the explanation doesn't make sense. See, the router security posture is not restrictive allow unless explicitly allowed. This is wrong. Once you deploy zones, there is no interzone traffic back and forth. It's only intrazone. An option, this should be correct, but let's verify that up. Interface ACLs are applied before a zone-based policy for a policy when they applied outbound. So interface ACLs are applied before the zone-based policy firewall when they're applied outbound. This is also wrong because they're applied after in the outbound direction. So it means that A is correct, and I gotta choose one of B or C to be correct as well. So B says interzone policies enable to apply different policies to multiple host groups that are connected to the same router interface that is wrong. So I'm gonna say that also one valid answer should be C. This is, if that's correct is, this is a very, let's say, bad wording because this means that it has to do with the self zone, which indeed by default all traffic to and from the self zone is allowed. 
So that's why they said the router security posture. So it has to do with the router state of security from the firewall point of view is not a restrictive. And that's correct. Unle allow unless explicitly allowed. But as, as you can see, I was able to come up with this with this answer as the correct answer, and hopefully it's going to be correct answer, just by eliminating the other options, because it was not clear to me what exactly do they mean by this specific answer, unfortunately. So let's say A and C, and let's see submit survey. And we got one wrong, which is the last one. So they state that the question was which of the following statements is true about student based policy for I choose two. And they stated that one of the correct answers is that interzone policies, which I have not taken, is this one. Interzone policies enable it to apply different inspection policies to multiple host groups that are connected to the same router interface. This is a 100% a wrong answer. Like this is the case where you will get feedback because a router interface can only be connect can only be attached to a single security zones. So then how can you build between host groups connected to the same router interface, which is a single zone, how can you build inter-zone policies? So this is 100% a wrong answer, well, without any doubts. So this is what what you do, of course. In in I mean, you, in the exam, you don't know what is, what is the what is the correct and what is the incorrect answers. So doesn't you you cannot basically provide feedback in here because I have chosen some options which I think they're going to be technically correct. But again, hopefully in most his exams where Cisco fixes problems up, you're not going to get enough questions in the exam which are like this, where clearly the answer is wrong, and we're not going to get enough of questions of this. So you're going to so you're going to fail the exam. It can be a couple of mistakes in there, but not too many, hopefully. If that's the case, if you, if you go to the exam prepared and you miserably fail, then instantly raise the ticket with Cisco and with Pearson View so they can analyze what happened in there. Because basically, if you, if you, if you, end, if you went to the exam prepared and you got, what, 30 points, like 30%, then clearly something went wrong. And in case you didn't felt, you know, just ill or bad in that day, it means there was a problem with the exam 100%. Okay, one more example, and then we move on. We take another short break. So let's look at the practice, and let's see which ones we haven't touched yet. Let's take, for example, the IPS. Next one, and then we're going to move on. Let's say next. So log monitoring and correlation intrusion prevention systems and surveillance cameras are examples of which type of con con countermeasure? So this is just a generic question. Basically, it gives you certain security solutions. So log monitoring and correlation, which is CM, IPS, and video surveillance, and asks you those are examples of which types of countermeasure. And then the options are recovery, that is 100% not correct. Corrective, 100% not correct. Detective, and that is correct. Deterrent should be, from my point of view, not correct. Because basically, the, IP, the surveillance camera detects, you know, monitors whatever happens within the environment. IPS, IPS prevents, but also it detects at the same time. So it prevents attacks from happening by detecting them as they happen and stopping them. And then CM does the same thing. And determine basically shouldn't be the answer. So let's choose up detective and click next.